Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Greg Olmo with Key Performance Ideas, and I would like to welcome you to our webinar, Oracle's new Consolidation and Close Cloud Application. Today's webinar will be presented by Scott Costello. Scott Costello is the Director of Cloud EPM for Key Performance Ideas. He is a CPA and is a certified Oracle Hyperion Planning, S-Space, and Hyperion Financial Management Consultant. Scott is a recognized leader and frequent speaker at national and virtual events to foster best practices in enterprise for performance management and business intelligence. He has more than 17 years of consulting management experience and has guided customers across a variety of industries in their implementation of successful planning, forecasting, close, and reporting solutions. Thank you, Scott, for joining us today. Thanks, Greg. And thanks, everyone else, for being a part of today's presentation. Um, I'm going to get right into today's agenda and walk you through a little bit more of what we plan on presenting. So, um, Oracle recently released the financial close and consolidation suite of solutions that's really focused on replacing um, these sort of legacy cloud solutions that are out there and uh, providing organizations with a, a cloud option for doing their close. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that, give you a simplified approach on how to get there, talk a little bit about some successes that we've seen in this space, and just the cloud in general. So let me start by just talking a little bit about successes with the cloud EPM. As Craig mentioned, I'm a, the director of the cloud practice, so I want to focus just on that. Um, the products have only been out for a short period of time, but there's been a fair amount of adoption that we've seen. Um, these numbers are as of June. 1,500 organizations today are, are using this technology. Um, that familiar Hyperion brand, um, tens of thousands of end users, and it continues to grow. The industries that we see this really taking place are, are everywhere. It's pervasive. It's not one particular industry, one particular area of the world. It's uh, global deployments. We've seen every industry you can think of. Um, and the applications have been built on technology that we've all used for years. So anyone familiar with that Hyperion name, um, this is just the next evolution of it. So it's been Technology has been around for a long time and is moving this into a now a cloud environment and making that a little bit easier for groups. Uh, we've seen our fair share of success in the cloud EPM space. And here's a few logos just kind of representing some of those um, with places like SunSource, YMCA, TTDI. Uh, some of these can be found in our uh, website for successes. But a lot of different ways that people are using it. A lot of folks are using this for doing their monthly reporting, um, as well as their budgeting and analysis, of their entire financial suite. So we see it being used a lot of different ways. Um, some people are using this for sales forecasting. Some people are using it for marketing planning. It's just a variety of the adoption that we're seeing, and as you can tell, a variety of industries. We wanted to highlight one organization that we recently worked with that um, wanted to use the cloud for doing their closing consolidation. So the wiring and systems electronic uh, organization that supplies, and pro that supplies products to the automotive industry um, based in Finland, but they have organizations all over the world. Um, they recently moved their general ledger to the cloud, so they had already bought into the idea of the cloud, and they wanted to start moving their consolidation and close process into the cloud as well. So this gives you a little more background on them. Um, as I mentioned, multi-international. Uh, what was interesting is they used Hyperion Financial Management, which is a non-premises closed solution to help with both close and consolidation. So they're bringing in all their different GLs from all these different international groups uh, and consolidating them in one place. The challenge, one of the challenges they had was their hosting contract was about to expire. So they knew they needed to shift to something, and they knew the cloud was going to be a right fit for them. Um, they also required some, some complexity around their intercompany elimination to be able to do top-side adjustments. But their end goal was to produce those monthly financials. 
the management reporting, income statement, trend and cash flow, and even do some tax reporting in the tool. So the solution that we built for them now has all the dimensionality that they required. Um, we build the automated intercompany elimination process for them uh, using some more complex business rules. Um, they have different data entry forms for doing different types of adjustments and entries. Uh, they even have the option of using this more for forecasting. They leverage tools that are probably well known to former Harperian people, like SmartView and financial reporting, uh, which are built into the application. They're using that for doing all types of reporting, as mentioned, management reporting, summary balance sheet, and income statement, uh, trended cash flow, even some tax reporting, as well as variance reporting. Um, all that was kind of a manual effort before, and now they were doing it outside of HSM. Now they were able to bring some of that budgeting process into the tool as well. So what we, um, and we recently presented with this organization, but some of the benefits that they said that they achieved, you know, were around the economies of scale. Again, they were using a hosted solution in the past and um, required a third-party involvement to manage any of the infrastructure, hardware, and updates. Um, IT was involved just in making sure that those processes were up in place, but finance really wanted to own it going forward. So moving into the cloud just made a lot more sense. Um, this solution is also a mobile tool, so we'll talk a little bit about the mobility of it shortly, but it gave finance the ability to really access information anywhere they wanted to. One of the nice things about the cloud, you don't have to be in a VPN or anything like that. You can literally pull up information on your phone. Um, because they were using on-premises version that was hosted, they were didn't have any issues with services not starting, hardware malfunction, um, and the cloud environment really allowed them to grow. Instead of having to buy more hardware, buy more servers, they could uh, just expand their solution within that cloud tool. And as mentioned, they streamlined the entire budget cycle too, along with their financial close process. This is just one example of an organization using cloud EPM uh, for the closing consolidation as well as budget. But we've seen a lot of folks really shift to the cloud. And when we ask them, you know, why are you shifting to the cloud, we always like to share those stories with others that are thinking about it. And one of the biggest reasons is the, uh, the IT involvement. Um, and that doesn't just mean individuals from IT supporting the system, but it also means the infrastructure, the hardware, everything associated with it, having to purchase it, having to keep it updated and upgraded. That's an area that can be shifted over now, that we're seeing more and more of a, a movement with all technology, whether it's Microsoft 365, um, or just our day-to-day -day interaction with things like on LinkedIn or Facebook or, um, or on Amazon. The other big thing that people really liked in our reasons they gave us to move to the cloud is, um, you know, with growth, they don't have to worry about getting more servers. They don't have to install more software. They don't have to keep expanding their, their current footprint. Let the vendors take care of that for you. Let Oracle take care of that for you. Um, when it comes to ROI, that was another big thing. Like traditionally speaking, with on-premises solutions, you're installing hardware, you're procuring hardware, uh, you're taking a good month of a project to make sure everything runs technically as it should. Um, all of that goes away in this cloud environment. So by definition, you're reducing the amount of time you need to uh, spend on uh, implementation. Also, because you can access this information from anywhere, um, it gives you some flexibility too of when you can get work done, where you can get work done, um, to speed things along. And of course, a lot of folks just love the Hyperion name, right? It's been around for a long time, since the mid-80s. This is something that's been proven time and time again. There's tens of thousands of clients using Hyperion technology, and this is just another uh, incarnation of it. So when people heard that Oracle EPM is really Hyperion, that was a big part of why they wanted to shift. And of course, if their old solution was updated or even unsupported, and we've seen a fair amount of that where people are recognizing they can't keep up with the updates that they need to, nor should they worry about being in the practice of it. Let the technology do that for you. 
The other big thing that we see is the economic impact of the cloud. Um, because this is a SaaS model, you're paying you know, a monthly fee. Uh, you're not paying maintenance on top of the software. It's all embedded in the fee. You don't pay for the upgrades. You can even eliminate or recommission servers if you have existing footprints of a solution. Um, from a cash flow perspective, being able to expense subscription over capitalizing uh, the cost of the software or even the cost of an implementation. And really those implementations are one time because uh, unless you want to add more functionality or grow your solution, the uh, implementation should be once and then all the upgrades happen for you automatically. So again, those are some successes that we've seen and a reason why we've seen people kind of make that shift into the cloud. Um, now I wanted to change gears a little bit and talk about a specific solution today. So this is Oracle's Financial Close and Consolidation Cloud Service, or FCCS. Yes, one of the C's is, is silent. Um, you get to pick and choose which one that is. Uh, but really, this is a new cloud option for running your consolidations and close. So I'm going to give you a kind of a brief background of what's included with a solution and some of the benefits um, with it, and I'll go into a, a quick presentation of it. So there's four main things that you know, I really want to leave you with. One is um, the ability to create things quickly, the ability to have pre-built content, pre-built functions, and pre-built dashboards. That's what you get with this solution. It's really pretty encompassing in everything that you get and, and how it comes out of the box. So this first slide talks a little bit about that uh, quick creation. Again, we talk about faster implementations. This is a big part of why. There's, there's wizard set out to help you decide how would we want our organization to run um, single multi-currency uh, to enable certain things like data search tracking, uh, supporting your company, have a workflow built into it, even choose between uh, multi and or gap reporting. Uh, there's cash flow built into it, balance sheet built into it, so there's a lot of components already built in. So from the creation standpoint, that's a big point, it, it, just being able to get that up and running quick. The other thing it comes with that's a little unique is predefined aspects of the application. So there's 11 dimensions out of the box, and those dimensions themselves are built out. So it's not like you get an empty account dimension or a period or things like that. It's based on how you set up things in your wizard, you can have things created for you automatically. Um, you can add additional custom dimensions as needed you know, for things like uh, uh, multi-gap um, as required. So there are opportunities to add additional dimensionality, but a lot of them come out of the box. And then the reporting that comes with it too is pretty impressive. There's all different types of journal reports, intercompany reports, um, close manager is built into it, and close manager reporting is pretty phenomenal in that you can do all these different types of task oriented type of reporting. Um, and then financial reports to produce your, your monthly financials. So just to harp on a little bit more on some of the, uh, the close aspect of it and some of these other features, um, the close manager, which was so, Personally, kind of a separate solution is now embedded into the cloud. Um, this is a tool that really holds people accountable for different tasks within the closed process. So if you have 30 different tasks from closing your subledger to resolving your company, um, all those can be created in the, in the closed manager, which is part of the solution. Um, you can even make that appear as a calendar, make it appear as a Gantt chart. You can see it all different such ways. You can assign people, you can assign approval processes for any task that's a part of your close. The uh, data management tool, um, sometimes referred to as FDM, is built into the application. So this is a tool that's going to help with data integration, so loading your general ledgers directly into the application where you can do all your mapping, you can even um, import and export mapping if you want, and you can schedule all the data integration to occur at uh, the time needed. Some of the other features and functions include the, the journal template um, for things like adjustments or top side, uh, supplemental data. Supplemental data is kind of a solution similar to Hyperion schedules for those familiar with that. 
um, which gives you a little more detail on any particular line item in your balance sheet or P&L. Um, name an intercompany matching reports, and I'll show you a little bit of that today. So not only do you get tools that are just built into it that were um, traditionally separate solutions, the cloud brings it all together. The other big thing that they've added is the, the analytics. Um, I think it's pretty common for folks when they do their close and consolidation to produce financial statements. But how are, how are you really analyzing your closed process? How are you ensuring compliance with the standards you set or any external standards that you might be held to? That's what's built into it that's never been there before. Um, so having dashboards where you can see things like where are we in our different tasks, how far are we behind on the close, what are complete, what are incomplete, to have compliance dashboards, um, monitoring any sort of delays and things you can key, on, key in on from responsibilities. These are the sort of things that we're seeing help shorten and close cycles. So if you're in a 10-day close and you want to try to figure it out, how can you get to maybe a 9-day or 8-day close? Use these tools to hone in on where those delays are, are traditionally, right? And that's where you can uh, turn your focus. Then, of course, from um, a metrics tax or a key financial metrics and reports, that's built into it as well. So I'll show you some examples of things that are in income statement, cash flow, balance sheets that are just part and parcel to the solution. And as I mentioned, this technology works with a browser. So it's supported by Internet Explorer, Firefox, uh, even Chrome and Safari. So if you have a mobile device or a tablet, you can use the browsers of those devices to interact directly with these dashboards. So not only do you get these great features and functions of the solution, but you also get something behind it all. So behind all this is Oracle's data center. And that data center uh, the people that are doing all the upgrades. So doing all the patching on a regular basis for you, they do daily backups of your information, and you can even create a more regular backup process if you wanted to do it throughout the day or um, keep backups for, you know, 30-day period. You could do that quite easily without even getting IT involved. Um, but they're doing the diagnostics, too. They're tuning the applications. They're making sure they're monitoring it and looking to see it need a little more power, to need a little less, making sure that it runs most efficiently for you. So having this big team behind your solution is a big part of, again, why we see folks making the shift and something to keep in mind as I present um, the financial close and consolidation cloud service. All right, so let me give you a, a quick demonstration here of, of what the tool looks like. And this is our own environment. Um, where we have financial close and consolidation suite. Okay. Um, so what you see on the, this front page is really the login screen. Uh, I'm logged in as Maria here, and I can see on the left-hand side all my different tasks that are open, um, anything that's running late. I can put any notes in here for any, everyone to see um, as you move quarter for quarter. Uh, what's really nice is you know, I have the big button now look and feel for the application. So it works like a lot of tablets and mobile devices work these days, too, um, where the UI is just a different experience. The entire Oracle suite of solutions that's now on this um, in terms of applications is, is moving towards this user interface. What's also nice is as Maria, you know, if I click on this icon here, I can see um, a couple things. If I ever have an issue and I need to reach out to Oracle support, I can do that right from here and just click on a link. Um, also, if I have any sort of feedback on the tool that I want to provide to Oracle's RD, this provide feedback link goes directly back to them. So if you want to see a new feature, if you want to see a new function, that feedback goes right back to R&D, and that's where, um, you know, they get a lot of their content for developing the updates each month. Let me click on the dashboards here to kind of get started with that piece. Um, what it comes again out of the box with is three different areas for doing dashboards. One for just monitoring the closed process. 
two, for ensuring compliances, and three, for helping you produce financials um, in more of a graphical way than ever before. So if I go into the close overview, you see it'll pop things up into the top here where I can see things that way. Close overview will just give me a direct view of how am I doing on the close. I'm responsible for X amount of tasks. Have I completed those tasks, which are incomplete? And even break them down different ways. So I can filter on how it's broken down. I can click on the 26 that are incomplete and see exactly what those tasks are and then click on any one of them. So again, this is part of that close manager solution um, that's built into it. And I can see this any way I want. So if I click over in the dashboard here to get an overview of it, um, I can even categorize it by, okay, of those open tasks, you know, which are high priority, which are low priority, uh, really just spin it any way you want to monitor how you're doing on the close. If I take a look at this from a compliance perspective, you know, this is where I can really see the accountability and responsibility. Um, I can see how we're doing from a timing perspective. Uh, what things are prepared on time, what's been approved on time, what things rejected on time, do we have any outstanding alerts? I can see that by user, so I can really, you know, hone in on things by user. I can see it by different tasks. I can see it by um, type of task, so you really can filter in on this, again, to help manage the overall compliance and intuition. Uh, and then last is the financials. So if I click on financials here, this is where I can have all sorts of different types of dashboards. Um, and you can build as many as you want. So an example of, of some of these, if I click on the income dashboard, uh, you know, I can see things like the product mix. I can think see things like my actuals compared to revenue. I can see trends of how we're doing. Now, this sort of insight, again, was never there before. And what's nice about it is the ability to interact with it. So if I wanted to drill in on the computers here, you know, I can just click on it, and I'll see all the different products associated with um, the sales for March associated with my different uh, product grouping. I can spin it. I can drill back up. I can pop this information out. I can change my drop-down boxes. really have a lot of different options of what you can do with these dashboards. Um, again, it changes the way we consume data. It's not just staring at numbers on a screen anymore. A true closing consolidation process should make that data come alive, should make the information as valuable as can be. Um, so as Maria here, I did want to walk through some of those tasks and just show you a little bit more of the type of tasks and how you can interact with them. So again, I have 21 open tasks, 31 laid. If I drill into them right from the uh, login screen, I can see all of those. Uh, right here. So again, those tasks can be anything from just reviewing procedures when I got to check the box that I reviewed it, um, the currency rate, load some data, data regarding balance sheet, load specific sales data. I can see the status of it. I can see when it's expected. I can click on any description of it, and I can post any action on it as well. Um, let me go into a task here. I'll scroll down a little bit. What's at rent expense? Uh, if I click on rent expense adjustment here, what you'll see is a journal. So being able to have journals in a consolidation solution is, is key. Whether those are intercompany transactions, whether those are top side journals, um, being able to do things in a consolidated place so that I can post, you know, last recordings of actuals before I, I start delivering my financials. Um, you could put context around these. So if I want to put you know, description around what I'm doing here, um, I can pick and choose the point of view, what year, what period. I can pick the entity, what I'm doing with these. So this is to create some rent expense uh, to correct a rental expense due to an overpayment of 75000 So having my debit and credit. And then as a user, if this has been submitted to me, I can click on an action button and approve that, I can reject it, I can post it directly. I can even see the history of it, you know, where has everyone made changes um, in the application. So when you talk about auditability of the solution, you know, every click basically can be uh, audited and I can view that history.
Um, another task is around uh, supplemental data that I mentioned earlier. So this step form is a good example of how you might have supplemental data. And just being able to review that data, again, as part of your closed process. So if I click on the, the depth form as part of the supplemental data, you know, it's just making sure that, okay, we have this loan in place. Um, any loan that we have greater than 100,000 must be approved by an officer. So this is a loan that's a little bit greater than 100,000. And if I click on the debt information, you know, I can see the total of everything that's made up here. Um, and the description of every piece, every note that represents that total um, of debt. So every component of that that's part of this bank or part of uh, several banks I have in one spot. So this is where instead of just having one line item in the balance sheet around debt, I can break that debt down into types of debt. I can add details behind each type, uh, put a debt ID. So it allows you to get more granular for certain areas of the business where you need that granularity. All right, uh, if I scroll down again here. Um, another key part of any sort of consolidations around intercompany. I'm gonna click on the intercompany task. Uh, an intercompany task you know, can be a few different things. It can be creating the actual journals um, for those intercompanies. It can be setting up the reoccurring journals that you might have. Um, but you also have the ability of, of seeing reports associated with the intercompany. So just as one of my tasks, I need to go out and, okay, let's look at our company matching report and see how we're doing today. Does everything been reconciled? Um, I'm given an option for all the information I want to pick from, but I guess that tolerance levels and percentages, um, pick the entities and the partners, and then just click and run the report as a PDF. I can see everything right here. So here are the entities, here's the intercompany partner, um, here's the transaction. I do see some things out of balance here of 739, um, as opposed to the other entities, it looks like everything is netted out. So I want to make sure as a part of my close process that someone's looking at the center company report after me and reconciles or rectifies uh, this piece. So if I close my report, uh, I can go in and put an alert right here, you know, make a note to say the balance is still off, you need to review this make it a high priority, and assign the appropriate individuals um, that are responsible for this. So these are the things that make you know, the process go a little quicker. And when I assign this, then everything is synchronized with um, your mail system. So as soon as I say, hey, I'm gonna assign this to the next person, they're gonna get an email, because we all you know, have our email open all day long, um, right away letting them know. So it's not like they have to come into the system in order to be notified of this. All this is synchronized with, uh, with email as well. And then last, you know, any good um, closed process obviously ends with reviewing some of the financial reports or is really done throughout the whole process. If I click on my review financial reports, again, just another task where I can see the owner, I can see who it's assigned to, the start date, the duration of how long this task should take, any of the history. I have a related task, like a dependency or um, something like that. I can see the related task. I can click alerts as I showed earlier just by clicking a button. So if I click on generate financial reports, for those of you used to Hyperion um, are familiar with the financial report tool, this is, a, this is that same solution um, in the cloud. So being able to deliver uh, pixel perfect type reports directly in HTML and PDF. I'll just click on the uh, income statement one here for forecast. Being able to select the criteria that you want uh, before you run it, click continue, and then literally run the report right here. So this is that nice PDF where you can put in all the logos and things like that. This reporting tool, of course, can also be used for bursting out reports to end users. Um, or posting them in a, a particular area that you want people to come in and grab. So as I mentioned, the same tools that everybody's kind of used to with the Hyperion Suite are just built into the cloud tool. Um, and that includes the, the uh, Excel 
an office add-in as well. So in, um, in the Hyperion world, there's always been an add-in to interact with the application. And this is true today in the cloud as well. Uh, that solution is called SmartView. And SmartView, and it works across the entire office suite, but allows you to interact directly with the data. Um, I can literally just start typing stuff in here and see my information um, as soon as I click refresh. So when I refresh the data, my numbers are there. There's no links, there's no um, formulas, there's no hidden values or anything like that. You literally type in what you want, click refresh, and you can see the data. But just things like a double click, I can drill into it, I can drill across time, um, I can further investigate it by any uh, other dimensions in my application, so slice and dice it any way I want. So from an ad hoc perspective and interacting with this, this is what people really love about the tool, is the smart view interaction. This is more for ad hoc, but I can do things on the total, um, you know, reporting perspective. If I want a pretty looking report or things like that, I could, you know, make it look any way I want. Um, bold things, format things, uh, put logos in, you name it. Um, and it also works with, with PowerPoint too. So if I go into PowerPoint, I have a smart view add-in right here where I can bring in that same data and I can see that this is a live link back to my application, uh, not just a copy and paste from Excel, but an interactive live link, which means I can uh, drill into this, um, I can change my point of view, I can update my PowerPoint presentation you know, every month, um, every quarter, every year with just a few clicks. So that's a quick demonstration of the application. Again, um, if you wanted to see something a little more uh, relevant for you, we're happy to set something up and I'll talk about that at the end. But I did want to stress, you know, a lot of times I get folks asking, yeah, I'm not sure if we're ready for the cloud or, um, you know, is this the right choice or when should we move? So I just wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about that. Um, at Key Performance Ideas, what we like to do is we'll sit down with you and we'll really talk about it. Right? Let's take a look at your current state. Let's take a look at your process. Are you using a, a solution today? Um, and what are some of the challenges with those solutions? Uh, are you using um, just Excel today? Is this a better option for you than Excel? I mentioned some of the economics, um, the ROI that you can see with this with not having to um, purchase the hardware and things like that. Um, so we can help with that sort of impact, um, especially when it comes to an on-premise versus a cloud uh, conversation. Like I said, if you wanted to see a very specific demonstration of the solution or drill into any area that I showed today, we're happy to do that too. So as part of your assessment of the solution, you know, let us do a demonstration. Um, we've even provided organizations with the ability to kind of get hands-on with it ahead of time to do some uh, workshop or training so you can get a feel for what it's going to be like and see if it's right for you. To complement this, for organizations that are kind of coming from scratch, um, we do offer a solution called Closed Tastic. Uh, and that Closed Tastic solution is really a methodology of getting you up and running as quick as possible. So um, getting you a streamlined requirement and design, we have some content associated with the design that we use to get you started with the application a little bit quicker. Um, filling out the financial statements, getting the users in, uh, producing the monthly and quarter reports, any sort of overrides for currency, um, the acceptance testing and training, and then documentation. So we can't uh, harp enough on the training that we provide as a part of this. We do very specific functional training um, to make sure that you feel comfortable with the solution as we're building along. We'll do prototypes and that training throughout the life cycle of the application. So it won't just be at the end. We don't offer a turnkey solution where we go in a room and build it and then educate you later. It's really um, you guys getting hands-on with the solution uh, along the way. That is the end of uh, my presentation today. If you wanted to learn a little bit more about closed or free assessment, definitely feel free to reach out to us. 
Um, but at this point, I'm going to turn it back over to Greg for any closing comments. Uh, thank you, Scott. And thank you all for joining us today for the webinar, Oracle's new consolidation and close cloud application. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. Our contact information is on the screen. And again, thank you for joining us for today's webinar and have a great afternoon.